it's the TSW Toy Box Podcast from Talk Star Wars. Each month, collect a brand new show, each release separately, featuring three hosts with movable arms and legs. Mark. The Supreme Master, the Emperor. Jeremy. And he's got a lightsaber. And moderated by Rob. He's a trash monster. It's the TSW Toy Box from Talk Star Wars. Now I know the Force is with us. Hello and welcome to the TSW Toy Box podcast from Talk Star Wars. I'm your host Rob and I'm joined as always by Mark. Hello. And Jeremy. Hello. Hello guys. Uh, how are you guys doing? You good? Fantastic. Excellent. Mark, you sound fantastic. Oh. Have you been tra- you've been tinkering with your kit, haven't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bought myself a Mac. Oh, okay. Fair enough. You do, you, do, you sound clear as crystal from my yeah, side. Yeah, microphone's plugged in this term. Got Yeah. That also helps a lot. <laughs> right, so we're going to jump straight into our main our main piece uh, for this episode. So we were lucky enough to speak to one of the collecting gurus, and I mean, and I, I do not mince words when I say this. It is, you know, you're about to hear quite how much this dude knows. So um, there's a guy named Jason Smith who's uh, kind of colloquially known as Mister Palatoy, and um, what we are about to play for you is an interview where we talk to him about his collection and we ask him all sorts of cool questions and the answers he gives are nothing short of incredible so uh enjoy that which is coming now all right so uh this is rob i'm joined by mark and jeremy as is the customary but also we have a special guest with us so uh joining us on the line is uh jason smith hello jason hi how you doing that's good thanks yourself yeah not bad Excellent, excellent. So uh, Jason is no doubt familiar to those uh, prevalent in the toy collecting community, but we're going to, for those who aren't familiar, we're going to go into a few kind of, have a bit of a chat, ask a few questions, get a few answers, hopefully. And uh, those who aren't familiar will know by the end, and those who already are will know even more. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, so Jason, how's your weekend been so far, first of all? All right, I've been been quite a lazy weekend, but uh, nice and relaxed. Yeah, that's that's always nice. Uh, so who wants to who wants to kick us off? I'll go first. Um, go for him. Hi, Jason. Hi there. Do you want to tell us about your collection? Sure. Um, I, I I kind of consider myself to be quite a new collector, though I've I've been collecting for ten years now. And I, I guess with newer collectors coming along, I'm, I'm kind of viewed as maybe one of the, the older collectors now. But I, 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 I had um, the figures when I was a kid. So I, 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 I was about seven or eight when Star Wars came out. So I got the whole build up yeah, to same as me. Yeah. Star Wars coming out in the UK. Um, I lived in the very north of Scotland, so it was very hard to yeah. get uh, any of the action figures. So when <laughs> when we used to visit our uh, relatives down down in the Nottingham area. Which we used to do about twice a year. That's when I got to buy right. Star Wars figures. So um, I had I had the first twelve and the Land Speeder. Wow. Um, cool. Managed to collect all of those, and then um, the next eight came out, and I kind of went, "Oh, they're far too difficult for me to get in the north of Scotland." And I got a mate who used to go up the road and play at his house, and he had everything. So I kind of concentrated <laughs> on Action Man at that point. Fast forward to ten years ago, and um, my, uh, my 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 partner was uh, basically saying, oh yeah, she she bought me this modern Yoda for Christmas and said, oh I know you like Star Wars and I said, oh I've got all the original figures, I've got them all out, all still there. Of course, I'd, Leia had lost a blaster and I was like, oh, I've lost my Leia blaster. What am I going to do about that? <laughs> I had a little look on eBay and um, oh yeah, you can buy buy figures and weapons and stuff so um i bought another layer in a blaster and i guess 10 years ago i must have been paying about you know six or seven quid for a layer with a blaster back then <laughs> Crack it. Not it's now but um <laughs> anyway so i got that got my got my got my blaster at this point but then i've got a spare layer so i'm like, oh, what am I gonna do with this layer so i sold the layer then i just thought oh wouldn't it be nice if i just got those next eight figures so i started buying them and within a month, I had all the box vehicles turning up. I bought my first box, and and it was just it was going nuts at that point. So that that's when I got back and in, back into collecting. I kind of started off getting the first 
first 20 power toy mint on card. Wow. Which I did within about a year and a half or two years. I mean, the, the, that's at prices of maybe a, a tenth what they are now. And even then, I thought that was expensive. <laughs> um, and then I then I moved into I moved into kind of card backs at that point. I decided I wasn't going to try and get all the power toy mint on cards because even even then I was a long way behind Gary Smith, who's another power toy mint on card collector. Yeah. And I kind of thought, well, rather than trying to just follow behind Gary, I'll, I'll do something slightly different, which was basically trying to get every single power toy card and every figure combination, you know, regardless of how minor it is. So I, I've, I've been doing that for 10 years. Right. I then kind of decided that um, I wanted to have some really nice mint on cards. And I thought, oh, Afra, they, they grade cards. I'll, 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 I'll get 90s. So I had, a, I, had a, I had a run of about 16 or 17 Afra 90 <sighs> Power of the Turn of the Jedi cards. Why am I? Yeah, which I don't have anymore. We got rid of some of those. We can we can go into why why I got rid of those in a bit. But uh, I had that. Um, I, I started a, um, a a focus. So I think on Rebel Scum at the time there was a a focus collectors thread, and there yeah. were maybe two or three figures that nobody had done a focus on. All right. And two was one of the what was one of those. I thought, well, no one's done a two one B focus. I'll do one of those. So. <laughs> I started a 2-1-B focus. It's it's kind of all – it's all production stuff. I don't really have any pre-production stuff. I think I've got a Revenge of the Jedi wow. proof card, but the rest of it is mostly like a complete Kenner run and Palatoy run and um, most of the common uh, foreign ones bar the – I think there's a, a Spanish pox with a sideways um, card back on the – uh, on the back with all the figures yeah. which there's one known mock of um that came up was it started this year or last year and it was it was eight thousand euros which was beyond my price range so uh, obviously i'd love one of those um yeah. i've also got um a kind of full almost full run of palatoy open palatoy vehicles and stuff like that recently i've been collecting uh letra set stationery and the helix the helix stuff because i had i had some of that when i was a kid as well so i've got got a, got a few bits that i still have from my childhood i saw your desk there uh... yeah and i got i, I obviously had uh, yeah got a, a desk style pencil sharpener which uh, i managed to get I'm on after the, one of those. <laughs> on the bbc news which was uh, quite yeah. interesting yeah um and i think i think that's about it full set of loose figures I think that might covers most of the stuff I've got now. So um, I, I've got, a, I've got a, basically, I've got a, a loft room, which started out where there was like a, a little corner of it was Star Wars, <laughs> and then a third of it was Star Wars, and a half of it was Star Wars, and um, now it's completely Star Wars. Uh, the yeah. last thing I had to do was I had a, I had a display cabinet which had um, every, every pint glass from every. Uh, camera beer festival the called the great British <laughs> beer festival i had every beer glass since 1991 so i had to pack all those away to make loose <laughs> make space for a loose figure displays so it was a happy and sad occasion at the same yeah. time the beer went away but then there was more space for star wars so yeah prioritize these things <laughs> yeah i think if, if you're gonna give up space for beer glasses it's got to be for star wars anything yeah, else is gonna, gonna feel <laughs> Isn't going to feel right. Yeah, I was a bit conflicted. I mean, the, the other thing I, I I did recently as well, uh, with going to all the um, the celebration um, events in both here in Europe and in America, the amount of it's called swag, which is all the the collector made collector made stuff to swap. Like it started out with badges, but people are doing tea towels and all kinds of things now. So. <laughs> I did have a display which had all my old ZX Spectrum stuff in there, which was a couple of bookcases. And I, I, again, I had to take all that out just to get all the swag in for the last couple of years. So, and I have, um, I've got like, um, what, what I like doing is I like going there with all the lanyards on, with all the badges on, and seeing how many badges, how many lanyards I can fill. So, <laughs> I think at Celebration Europe, which is the first one in 2007, I filled half a lanyard. Then Celebration Europe 2, I filled two lanyards. And I went to Celebration 7 and filled seven lanyards. 
Celebration wow. Europe 3, I filled five. And then at the last one, Celebration A, I did a dozen. God, so I, I, have, I have an FX lightsaber that sits on top of an old TV. And it's like it's like one of these net curtains. So they all hang off that. And it's just like this big mass <laughs> net curtain of badges there, which is uh, quite nice. Wow. That's impressive, I, <laughs> I have to say. I, I, I'm, I've, I should really try and put them all on and, and see if I can stand up. <laughs> there must be um, like um, a nerd missing about, tea. <laughs> about 30 of them, given the numbers I was going through, I must have about 30 of them now full of badges. Yeah, yeah. I think Jeremy's right. You do. It sounds like a, a Mr. T jewelry collection for yeah, nerds. It's, it's great. great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. So, how long have you? So, you've been a collector for, I mean, how long, kind of, would you say? In well, I terms started, of, started, you know. I started back collecting in 2006, I think it was, when I came back, and uh, so it's just been just over 10 years now. Wow! Um, and considering you've got the nickname Mr. Palatoy, um, according to Mark, anyway, this is my source. Um, it seems like you, you know, 10 years seems relatively quick, considering you have a nickname within the collecting community. Well, it's, it's one you pick yourself. It's like um, back then, it was. Um, rebel scum there was the imperial outpost Mm -hmm. and i think swf uk came along after that and it's just i picked i picked mr palatoy as just being being the login on all of them so ah okay so it's more of a a handle within the community yeah i mean i i mean you you, you can tend to use the handle when you're on forums and when you're when you're on when you're on facebook you're just i'm just jason smith so cool okay um so what i I know it's tough because it's going to be like choosing between your children but if you had to pick a favorite item or a favorite few items what do you think those would be most likely to be um favorite few items so uh, when i was at the original celebration um i I picked up basically i was after that's when i was trying to collect the first 12 palatoy mint on card and i had like the seven easiest ones and somebody posted a full set for sale individually at the point where most of the americans were midway over the atlantic so the 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 day before the first celebration europe um i went off and and i think i spent there were i mean even even at those those days they were dirt cheap prices i think i I got four of the rarest ones for about two thousand pounds so those are those are quite favourite. My, my you know my first twelve Palatoy mint on card because obviously those are the ones that I had when I was a kid. Mm. I also picked up um, a shop sticker that says uh, the the toys of the film are here, and um, you know there's there's a few of these kicking around and there's a lot of, there's a load more fakes. But that that's one of my favourite items because it's kind of a quite a nice little sign that you can kind of use as a centerpiece for a little little display you might want to do. Um, my, 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 uh, the Death Star pencil sharpener is, is, is quite a new thing that I've got, which is uh, quite, quite a favorite of mine. And I think in, in terms of other, other mint on cards, it's not mint on card, it's a resale, but I've got a, uh, Power Toy Vinyl Cape Jawa, uh, resale. Uh, so this, this was, this was before, this was about two or three, maybe four years before, Affa graded um, the the one that was graded about you know three two three three odd years ago now, and it was it was an opened example. So um, I acquired that, and it was all stuck down with sellotape, and it looked quite messy. So I peeled all the sellotape off and stuck the whole thing back together. And um, that, that's one of the pieces I took under the BBC as well. So yeah, have you got a, a favourite item? Well, that's. Uh, out of the- uh, uh, the, the one, the one, you, I mean, the four rare ones that you've got. What, yeah. what are the, what are they, and which is your favourite? Got to be a favourite. Well, those are the ones which I would say. You know, that was half a dozen of the ones which are, I, I would say my favourite. My favourite item. I'm a big fan of that. Um, the, of of the the shop the shop sticker. I I quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they're quite hard to get as well. So. Right. Although, um. I'm going to ask you a question now. Yeah. Tell us about Titana. Oh. Oh. 
Well, well, it's one of those things. It's like anything that you wanted to know about Toy Tony, but we're afraid to ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're afraid just, of nothing. So, I mean, do you, do you just want the background so people understand who he is and what he did? Yeah, it gives it just so it gives us like a. Yeah, so the, the, the background is the um, the Panel Toy Factory finally closed in about 1987, and there was a lot of bits and bobs that were left over. Um. A, a guy called Arthur Daly acquired the stuff that was in the Paddle Toy Factory as a, as a kind of job lot, and um, a, a chunk of it was sold to Toy Tony. And the, the chunk that he got was 12,000 unused Paddle Toy German and Clipper card backs, yeah. um, a bunch of um, a bunch of figures, and a couple of boxes of bubbles. But that was principally what he got. Yeah. Um, so he, he kind of got all these at the, the end of the, the late 80s. And um, basically, he, put, he, he decided at the time, rather than trying to sell the unused card backs, it was more profitable for him to card them up and sell them as, as mint on cards. So he started doing that in the early 90s and did that all, all the way up until... Um, it finally came out that he was doing this in December 2013, which is um, about three and a half years ago. Yeah. So, wow. um, yeah, and there's basically there's thousands of them out there. So I think I think Affer yeah, have graded a couple. <laughs> Affer have graded a couple of thousand. UKG probably at least 500, I would think, 500 to a thousand maybe. And I mean, I think I think they've said they. They've only got a handful, but I, I saw one guy on eBay who was trying to sell a hundred. Wow, one go! So uh, they were all snow troopers. So um, yeah, I think so I've seen that. Yeah, basically, um, he started out the the early the very earliest ones can be found with iron marks on them, <laughs> yeah. and bubbles are melted, and there's mm. a little the, the the top of the iron's got a point on it, and you can see the little V impression between the double stem bubbles on the earlier ones. So you can see that on um, on some of the 65 back snow troopers. There's also a load of snow troopers where the bubbles are on upside down <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the bubble was too small and it was a single stem bubble. So the head, the snow trooper, goes in the in the top of the single stem. The bubbles are upside down. I think I think the thing the other thing that's interesting is at the point at which that job lot of twelve thousand card backs was sold, there were also some other lots of just just um, just Bob Effects and just Snow Troopers, with, where there were several hundred of these things that were sold as well. And I think for the the Bob Effects, they were all carded up really badly, and immediately they all all the bubbles fell off. So that that's why you kind of find a lot of a lot of um, 45 FET card backs where the, the, right. there's not much, much of a bubble impression. It's because it's one of the ones where the all the bubbles fell off. Right. So, yes, it's um, I still consider that to be, you know, the, the largest fraud in the industry. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, I think I think that's still still bigger monetary wise than. The, the latest one with the, the guy who was nicking stuff from Philip Wise and Steve Zansui, though they, they've not actually said what the dollar amount is on that, but and Tony was doing his for, you know, 20, 20-odd, 20 30-odd years. Yeah. I mean, I, I conservatively estimated that he must have carded half of his cards, at least. So, you know, that's, you know, say 6,000 cards at, you know, £100 a piece. Yeah. Oh. You know, that's there's half a million pounds right there. You know, so yeah. yes, indeed, he's still on uh, eBay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what what, what happened after um, after he was outed was uh, all all of the on he has his own he had his own website where he was selling mint on cards and basically anything of anything that he was making himself he took off there. And he stopped selling it on eBay, and he stopped. He's also got a little, uh, a little booth in a place called Snoopers Paradise, which is a little uh, flea market in Brighton where he lives. And as oh, far I as, know that one. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, he hasn't sold any of the stuff that he home sealed to anyone 
okay. since, since he was discovered, basically. I mean, all yeah. the stuff that he sells now is, I mean, because it, it's not, as well as having that particular stock, he also had other stock of stuff. He had a lot of, a lot of tri-logo mint on cards, which are genuine. He had Kenner, he had Power of the Force. He had quite a lot of uh, the Meccano Square card Jawas. The, the, there were loads of those kicking around the UK. So, I mean, that's one thing to bear in mind is not everything that he's got is, is, is fake. But on the other side of the coin, I would not buy anything from him through choice, you know, just, just because of what he's done to the hobby. So I, I would just, you know, it's like if you're getting something and you've got the choice of buying it from him. Yeah. Or just waiting for it to come up elsewhere. I'll just wait because you know, you know, he's he's not deserving of the business. No, I totally agree with that. Being strange people that we are, and people collect, um, you know, fake ones from Turkey and things like that. Is there any kind of market for his deliberate fake one? You know, the upside down. Uh, The answer is: Do people actually go, "Oh, I want one of them." Yes, yes, people do. It's, um, a lot of people, I, I think there was an initial period where there was a big rejection of them where people were saying, oh, this is terrible. We've got to find out which ones these are and they've all got to be opened immediately. But it's one of those things. What What's done is done. They've been put together now. Mm. The, for me, the important thing was rather than, you know, opening all the ones that, that, that have been made, it's it's been able to identify yeah. Which ones are his just by looking at them? So that's so there's no need to take it and mark it in invisible ink or write on the back of it. You can just look at it and you'll know whether it's his or not. So oh, yeah, one, of I, one of the things I've done on my online power toy car back guide is basically for there's 23 cards that he had out of all the power toy cards. So I've I've basically for all of those I've basically looked at all the different bubble combinations, looked at them in detail and said, look, here are the genuine ones, here are the fake ones. This is how you tell them apart. And I've also done that with the the German and Clipper ones as well. So I've put German and Clipper cards on my power toy guide now, just so that all the information is in one place. Awesome. So um, this uh, card back guide, tell tell us more about that. Yeah, so there was um, there was an existing um, card back guide that was out there when I started collecting in 2006 by made by a guy called John Ford, who's uh, one another one of the old school power toy collectors. And when I came on the scene, it hadn't been updated in about a year, and then another year went by and nothing changed, and it, it became apparent that um, John, John had kind of lost interest in the hobby as a whole. And in updating this website, so I, I thought, well, it, it would be good just to be because we were still finding lots of new um, new examples on the matrix which which weren't listed there listed already. I thought it would be nice just to have a more up to date matrix. So what what I did is I, I took I took the original matrix, leaving all the numbering the same, and where new card variations on the back of the card. Um, were apparent rather than adding adding new numbers and having to renumber them all I just basically called them sub variations so you'd end up with so you'd have you'd have a card that was uh, say a 65c and then I would do if there was an, another variation I'd say well I might say there's a this there's a 65 CD or something like that just to okay. say what the the variation was right. Cool. So, how long has have you, how long have you been doing that? Um, well, I, I think I started. Let me have a look when the I can tell you exactly when the guide started. It started in um, October two thousand and seven. Oh wow! So that's been, that's been going almost ten years now. Yeah, so, so most, uh, most of your collecting career. Yeah. So um, the Matrix has got six hundred and three different figure card back combinations now and I, I consider a variation anything on on the card where there's a difference in the print okay so if, there's, if there's a factory code on it and there's you know you, you you know for certain cards you have factory codes to say that they were made in various different hong kong factories where they just add a couple of little letters on the card or maybe a little s somewhere mm-hmm. that, that's a variation for me and that that that's a new entry on the on the matrix 
Oh. Right. So there's, there's a matrix for that, and then for each of the each of the main variations, there's a page describing the card, all the different stickers you might get on that card, and types of bubbles that would appear on the card. If, if it's a variation with a toy Tony on it, then it will there'll be a big breakdown of all the cards which are Tonys and which ones are Tonys and which ones aren't. Um, and then there's, there's actually, I've added more matrices re- recently. There's there's one for um, Empire Strikes Back German and Clipper cards, which were also made in the Power Toy factory at the same time as the Ophelous 45B Empire Strikes Back card was made. Right. So there's a matrix for that. And then more recently, there's a matrix for Kenner cards, which were imported um, from America, where they put uh, Palatoy stickers on the back of the card, the 48 backs. All right. I've got a matrix for all the stickers now. Um, then there's a matrix, we, which is basically I call the Toy Tony matrix, which is just a matrix of all the different cards that he had yeah. and the number of cards he had for each. So if you, if you think is a particular card a Toy Tony, you can look on the guide see if it's on there, and see how many cards he had. And obviously, if, it, if it's one where he's got hundreds of cards, and there's hundreds out there, then there's a good chance whatever card you're looking at is probably going to be one of his. So, um, Other things I've added to the, that recently. Um, well, a couple of years ago, I started with this this idea that I was going to um, turn it into a full-blown Palatoy guide, where I was basically going to document all of the vehicles, spaceships, playsets, diecast figures stuff like that and i did i did that for all the star wars ones but then i kind of stopped while i was figuring out oh i've got a few more bits and bobs i need to get myself before i can go any further but essentially there's um there's there's i need to document that for the empire strikes back return of the jedi and maybe the tri logo as well and that will add maybe another 30 40 pages to the guide Wow. Then that would be at that point it would be a full guide for anything Star Wars Palatoy. You'd then be able to look on the guide and get an idea of what it would be. So that's a kind of ongoing project which I haven't really I haven't really addressed recently, but you know, the in the long term I'd I'd hope to fill all that out as well. Nice. So um you were interviewed on May the fourth for the BBC. Yeah, that was that was an interesting experience. It's, um, I've, I've I've kind of done a couple of things with the BBC previously. I've done things with outside of Star Wars with the BBC, where I've, I've kind of been filmed for stuff. And I was filmed a few years ago for a piece by Fake Britain on Toy Tony. So I was the Toy Tony expert, and they they came round my house and filmed um, up in my loft room. That was quite an interesting experience because um, they were coming around on the Monday and I was there Sunday night thinking, oh, you know, when you do a limelight, you kind of set things up and you can <laughs> yeah. take nice photos and you might post it and, you you know, 50 people might look at it. You might get five replies. And I was thinking, I'm doing a limelight on my whole collection room here. I've got no <laughs> idea where he's going to point the camera and it's going to be some more millions. And my room's a complete mess. <laughs> so I, I spent the Sunday just running around thinking, right, this room's kind of half empty. What am I, what am I going to do? So I, I, I got all my, my boxed vehicles and was, I just thought, I'll just put the iconic vehicles that everybody knows. So, I've, you know, I was putting Millennium Falcons out, nice big at and stuff. And I've still, I've still got most of that display up because it actually looks quite nice. And then I had, I only had a couple of lanyards with badges on it. I thought, uh, what I'll do is I'll put them both ends of the bookcase with all the badges on show, and then people will be able to spot all the badges. And they did. So all the badges that you can see in the video, people have gone, that's my badge, which was, that was kind of quite nice. So, yes, I was on I was on the BBC kind of being their expert for spotting Toy Tonys a couple of years ago. So um, basically on May the 3rd, late afternoon, I got a call um, basically saying – can, can you come in tomorrow and, and talk about Star Wars on our business program called uh, called GMT? We want to talk about Star Wars as an investment. 
And as as it, as it as is with a lot of these things for for the TV, you, you you get very short notice, you know. And I was just like, oh, where is it? It's in central London. I'm in London, so I was like, I'll do it. So um, what I need to, what I had to do was take in a a small display of stuff for people to be able to look at. So I took some of the nicer pieces that I think we've already spoke about. So I took my shop sticker, some of my first twelve figures, the Helix Death Star pencil sharpener, my Power Toy VCJ. Just so after we talked about this live bit about investment, I could then kind of say, oh, here's some stuff that you might have in your loft which could be valuable if you want to, you know, so people can go and look in the loft for stuff. But um, it's funny doing doing a live interview because you, you only get one take at it, so there's no there's no retakes. But it it didn't really feel that nerve wracking because when you, when you go in and you film, you're in a studio and there's the interviewer, there's you, you vaguely where there's a couple of guys behind the cameras, but they're big, massive cameras. You can't really see them and you can't really see anyone else. So, so I think if it had been in a, in a studio where there was an audience of even 40 or 50 people yeah. it would have been, it would have been more kind of like, Oh, everyone's looking at you, but it just, it's just like having a chat with someone. So <laughs> it wasn't as nerve wracking as I thought it was going to be. But then, but then when you're doing the actual interview, there's, I'd kind of like talk to the interviewer before about what we were going to cover, and we'd kind of agreed a kind of set of questions we were going to do. As as it turned out, because um, in that particular morning, Prince Philip had um, retired rather than passing away, um, it still made an awful lot of the news. So basically, rather than ca- cancelling any of the interviews they had that day, I think they just crushed them all down. So. The whole ah. interview was really compressed, and a lot of people said, "Oh, this 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 interview was very rude. It was interrupting you all the time." And the thing is, I'll just keep talking. If you give me a subject, I'll just keep talking and talking and talking. And obviously, <laughs> this guy's going right. We've got to cover this, that, and the other thing. So he just kind of rattled through it. And um, when I was setting up the display, they said, "All right, you're going to have a couple of minutes to set this display up." I've been going about thirty seconds, and the lady, oh, the producer. Okay producer lady ran over and said right we're going live again from the ad break and start taking off what I hadn't set up and wow. some of the things she was taking off were things that I, I was going to talk about so <laughs> I was going away with my cloth tape jar one I was like I've got to talk about that so I kind of grabbed that offer <laughs> it was all a bit of a rush and then um, you know we've got the little display and we talked about which bits were valuable and it, it all turned out right I mean the, the other thing is you've got to you've got to it's a non Star Wars, non collecting audience. You've got to kind of engage at the level where you're going to get something yeah. out of it. Mm. You've got to make sure you don't say anything that they're not going to understand, particularly. But then you've also got to say something that's kind of for the vintage community. And, and you've got to say the, the right kind of things that, so you're not going to say anything that's going to alienate the community, particularly. So when they were talking, he was asking me about. Star Wars as an investment, I'd really kind of thought about what I would say about that because obviously you just want to go, yeah, I'm, I'm in it for the money, you know, because I'm not. <laughs> so it was, you know, so the, it, it was an interesting experience though. Uh, yeah. I'd uh, recommend it if you have uh, if you get the offer, just say yes. and. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting you say about the, the interview having been truncated down because one of our notes here was, you know, they they didn't really seem to give you a lot of time to respond to things. So it's no, interesting it was, to know why that is. It was all it was all very compressed, and I think I think it's a very kind of sound bitey kind of pro. You know, when they're doing their interviews, they got to you know they got to hit their points, get their sound bites, and 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 on to the next thing. So mm. awesome. Okay. Um. So, do you think that uh, collecting has become more generally accepted? in society or do you think it's still seen as a bit of an oddity oh definitely i mean i think i think i think it goes too twofold with the 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 rise in geekdom as well i mean i've i've seen that i I, as well as uh collecting vintage star wars i also do um uh cosplay at comic cons and Mm, i've seen those yeah growing massively in the last 10 years as well and a lot of it is down to the big bang theory the big yeah. bang theory, kind of mainstream geekdom yeah. style, and that just that one program has has kind of ma- had a kind of balloon effect that's kind of made it more mainstream everywhere. So, 
Yeah, yes, it has. And, and you know, I, it used to be the case when I've also got a Facebook group, which um, I started, it'll be 10 years ago last August. And you can either, when you're on Facebook, you can either have a group, you can either have it open or closed. And if it's a closed group, that means you join the group, you, you type a message into the group, nobody else sees it. Whereas if it's an open group, you'll post and all your friends who don't collect Star Wars can see your message mm. on their feed. So when when I started the group, I, I used to get loads and loads of requests from people saying, can you please make it? a closed group because all my friends are taking the piss because I collect. <laughs> <laughs> and I I haven't had a request to make the group closed in about two or three years there. Mm. So I think what happens now is either either people are more accepting of it. I think I think what a lot of people who don't want people to know that they collect, they they they, they make separate profiles now. Oh okay. But, Wow, seems ex- it seems extreme from my point of view, I guess. But then I suppose maybe the circles I run in are more accepting of that sort of stuff generally. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I mean, I I mean, I've kind of got so you have you have different circles of friends, and if, I think I think my my particular Facebook profile, the, the, the circle of friends is it, there's a lot of Star Wars in it. So if you just look at my, if I just look at my wall, two thirds or three quarters of it is just vintage Star Wars now, mm. with a little bit of non-star wars thrown in every now and again but i mean I, you know it reflects what i do so i don't really you know i don't i don't i don't need, i don't feel the need to compartment compartmentalize things and say well it's got to be in this box it's just it's who i am and what i do so yeah and you're mr palatoy after all so you know you have a certain mm-hmm. reputation to live up to <laughs> uh, guys any other thoughts on there's one last thing from me um is there anything you're actually looking for? Oh, I'm looking for all kinds of pieces. Um, I'm I'm looking for the Helix um, pencil drawing set, which is a kind of um, half circle, yeah, shaped package with a star destroyer on the front, yeah. which is one of the 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 last of the Helix pieces that I'm kind of looking for at the moment. Um, I'm always looking for foreign card backs. I mean, I, I've I've kind of got lists of cards that I've been after for you know for years, and you know some of them don't come up very often. What other kind of things am I trying to do? I'm trying to um, trying to put together a loose run of diecast chips at the moment because I've, I've got a set of card mm. backs, and some of them came with the vehicles. So I'm kind of got kind of going well. Maybe I'll try and put a set of the vehicles together. So I've only got a couple at the moment. So that's the thing is, try and get a tire bomber. You find with a lot of focuses, you kind of there's there's the kind of easy bit that you can get to, and then once you've got all that, it's very difficult to add anything to it. So I'm kind of always looking for for new things to kind of collect. So you know, my my new thing in the last year or so was uh, the the Letra set and the Helix stuff. So I've got I've got quite a lot of that in the last year. So so the the diecast is just it's a new thing for me. So cool. Uh, do, you outside, have, do you have any advice for new starters for, for new collectors? What um, to give I was going to say yeah, yeah find, find something cheaper to collect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean no, it's you know it's um, you know it depends. You know if you, if you've got you know you know loads and loads of money then you know. Buy all the nice mint on cards you want. You know, don't don't pay too much for them. If you've got more of a budget, um, I collect. I decided I would collect card backs because those are cheaper. But card back, you know, you you can pay three figures for a card back easily these days if it's not you know wow. one of the common Kenner or Palatoy ones. So those are getting more expensive. Loose figures. Mm-hmm. You know, with weapons, are um, you know they're they're going for three figures these days. Yeah, so, wow. you know, it depends on your budget. You know, there's you know I, I, I've seen a lot of mint on card collectors who 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 aren't collecting mint on cards and are collecting card backs now, because it's I mean there are a lot of advantages to you. It's cheaper, they're easier mm-hmm. to post. You don't have to worry about the bubbles falling off. True. You know, you require a lot less space for them if you're just trying to store them. So, so true. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so maybe one of the advice pieces would be get into the new stuff instead, and then hold on to that and hope it goes vintage in the same way. 
Oh, I, I would never recommend anyone to collect modern because, you know, it's um, anything modern. Obviously, it, it's, as a collectible, it's never going to be worth anything more than you pay for it. You know, no, even, true, true. You know, all the all the Phantom Menace stuff that came out in 1997, which is 20 years ago now, mm-hmm. it's worth pretty much what you bought it for in the shop. So, yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of volume to it, and it all it all kind of looks – a lot of it looks samey, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you see people's collections, and it's full of modern – and it's just – all the walls are covered in these things. And I, 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 I think the advice I'd say, you know, go for, go for quality over quantity, I think, is, is always a good piece of advice. But, yeah. but then, then I'm trying to collect every single power toy car back there is, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, joking aside, I think modern collecting has become a bit of a, a bit of a misnomer, to be honest. Because I mean, you know, these guys are more vintage. I'm more, you know, I tend to collect uh, various different things, including Star Wars pop vinyls. And yeah, somebody well, asked me today, do you do you open them? I said, of course. Yeah, something like that. when I was at Celebration um, Celebration Eight, um, I was at the the Funko pop vinyl panel and. Mm-hmm. The lady giving the panel uh, opened, you know, it was even, it was just a common pop, pop and she, she got booze for doing that. Wow. But um, I think the thing is, the vintage stuff is rare, so it's it's harder to get. So for, for the modern stuff, they, they kind of do these exclusism stuff to try and make something that, that's more desirable. And it's all about trying to get the exclusives. And I think, I think the, the, the trouble with, um, the Funko Pop vinyls is the exclusive is a sticker, yeah. and yeah. stick. Or not, I mean, in in the presentation, the lady said, "Oh well, well you know, it's all important. You've got the the exclusives, and and I, we got the sticker off this one, and we stuck it on this other one. It's like, well, the minute they start making fake stickers, you know, that, that's the exclusives gone out the window, and <laughs> a couple of weeks after celebration, the, there's a list in there with." all the different stickers you'd want, you know, just pick them up. So, um, mm. yes, yeah. word, word of caution on sticker exclusives there. Yes, indeed. indeed. So, so, vin- so vintage all the way for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, um, I, I, you know, I, I, the, the, the Hasbro 40th are really nice. And I was just like, it'd be nice to have a set of those, but yeah. the minute I buy one, I've got to have a set and then they'll have another set. And that's, you know, but you know, by the time you've got through all that's you know five hundred thousand pounds you could have spent on vintage. So yeah, and then it's sure. like, where do you put it? Because I can't if I put it in my collection room, it's it's taking up space that proper vintage should be taking. So yeah, I've, I've never really kind of. I think I think if you if you if you've got kids and you know, modern collecting there is it is a great thing to do because obviously then you you know you, your kids can play with them and open them and yeah, it's not such a big concern. So. Yes, indeed. Cool. Any any other questions, guys? I'm done. I think I'm fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, how about you, mate? Uh, just one. It's not Star Wars related. It's the your uh, your cosplay. Um, oh yeah. Why old Biff? Um, why old Biff? Um, before I did what I would call cosplay. Um, I used to do, you know, I used to go to a lot, when I was younger, I used to go to a lot of parties where you, you, you there'd be, there'd be themed parties where you'd do fancy dress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you'd, you'd go into Smithies and you'd buy whatever, whatever the costume, costume is yeah. and you'd turn up in that. And um, I, I don't consider that to be cosplay or it's really rubbish cosplay because, you know, um, cosplay, it's all about, being the character and acting the way yeah. the character does and making sure, you know, the, the costumes as, as good as you can get. So when I went, I went to a, a New Year's Eve party called Blackheath to the Future, which was, it was back to the future theme. This was back in 2001, I think it was. And I went as car wash Biff. <laughs> and my costume was a tracksuit that I had, which was blue. I had a blonde wig which I, I kind of cut and then I tried to put hair gel in it to flatten it out and then I I had a flannel and I had some random trainers on and that, that was that was my car wash biff and I thought I'd done really well. <laughs> so obviously having done cosplay for a couple of years I saw the pictures of it and I looked at them and that is just awful. So I thought 
I want to go back and I want to do that and I want to do I want to do a proper version of it. So in in the film he wears uh, he's got a green Adidas yeah. tracksuit in it, in it. So I, I got the green Adidas tracksuit. I decided trying to do a wig it's it just it was better for me just to grow my hair and then just hairspray it into the same kind of shape rather than trying to do a wig. And then he had um there's an original, you know, there's a bottle of turtle wax that matches the turtle wax that he used. <laughs> so that was my first biff. And then I went to the, because I did, I'd done that, I was asked to go to a charity um, um, re, uh, kind of dance for um, for Back to the Future, where we had a big themed dance in a, in a nightclub, and they wanted me to be biff for the day. So as well as doing that biff, they wanted me to be, Another Biff called uh, Pleasure Paradise Biff, where he's in the alternate reality and he's got a dressing gown on and like lots of chunky jewellery. He looks a bit like Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump. So anyway, I did that Biff. Um, and then I thought, oh, but the one, I, you know, the one, the one, the other one that's really iconic that's not been done is is old Biff, where he's basically he's got these kind of granddad pants on it and a big red jumper and and he's got this this cane that he's got. And I thought, well, if I can get that cane, then I'll do I can do that cosplay. It's one of those things where there's quite there's some cosplays where they, they have they have certain props which are quite central to the to the to the character. And if you don't have a good prop, it really kind of diminishes from the cosplay. So I thought well, if I can get that cane and there was one guy in had an Etsy shop in America who made this cane and it looked really good. It was a big solid fist, which is what 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 it what it's made up of and it was like solid bronze and really nice. I thought, oh, I have one of those. But it was like sold out for it said sold out, uh, not available for six months. And this is like a month before con season. So I'm like, uh, what am I going to do? So I kind of sent him a mail and said, look. And he, you could see on his wall, people were posted and saying, um, I've ordered my cane, I've not got my cane. And he was kind of saying, oh, I'm, I'm having problems with the foundry. I can't get these things made quick enough. So I sent him this really cheeky message saying, look. I'm the guy who does Biff as a cosplay, and I sent them pictures of me doing car wash Biff and said, look, I know you've got problems like sourcing these things, but if you get a cancellation, send us one out because I'm, I'm, I'm doing old Biff for the, for the new season. So he came back immediately and said, yeah, I can send you one. So I got my cane, got the rest of the costume. And I think I think old Biff is the one I'm known for best now. So right. the actual actor who played Biff, who's always been, there's, there's certain people in the in 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 the kind of, cosplay signing kind of arena mm -hmm. who, who have never done it because they've always been very down and said oh it's just selling out and and the guy tom wilson who paid biff tannen in the films was one of these guys now obviously he's decided to cash in because he started doing cons now but he'll sign back to the future stuff and stuff and he's actually coming to london film and comic con um in july so i've got to do three three my well, three main biffs in two days at that so wow. that's that's going to be a lot of fun. So I've got, I've got, I've got at least one photo booked with him. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's really nice as a as when you're doing a cosplay. If you can meet the guy who does your character, that, that's kind of like a special thing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, I can I've, imagine that sounds great. I've never, I've never really done Star Wars, and the reason I don't do Star Wars is because, in terms of screen accuracy. Star Wars is just like it. it I mean, there's, there's certain groups where they're, they'll, they'll, they're kind of like very kind of. If you want to be in our group, you've got to be this accurate with your with your costumes. And Star mm. Wars is just absolutely nuts for that. Plus, a lot of the costumes are unmasked, so you have to wear a mask. And I, I don't like wearing masked cosplays. And it was one right. of those things where it's just like it's really going to ruin my celebration if I do Star Wars cosplay because I'll be trying to do when I'm at, when I'm at celebration I'm trying to do vintage all the time mm -hmm. and if I was trying to do cosplay as well it just it's just there's too much to do so I just thought well, you know what I'll do my cosplay but I'm just never going to do Star Wars so I've, I've kind of stuck with that at the moment. Cool. All right. Uh, anything else from my esteemed colleagues? No, oh, that's it from me. Okay. Yeah. I'm Great stuff. Just, I'm in awe from the sound of the collection. It is rather, rather awe-inspiring. Um, great stuff. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Jason. Um, so this, 
the opportunity now you have is to plug any social media or any anything you want basically we give you the floor um and it's your opportunity to sort of you know hype your own social media obviously we can do that in show notes for the show as well the floor is yours yeah Okay, well, I mean, I guess the two main things I have going is uh, I've got my uh, Palatoid Car Back Guide, which is on www.freewebs.com slash Mr. Palatoy. Dot com slash so that's, Mr. Been, that's been going for 10 years. And also going for 10 years is my um, Star Wars Facebook group, which was the first vintage action figure collecting group that was out there. So that I set that up in August 2007. And and the name of the group is the keywords that you would probably type in if you were looking for Star Wars on Facebook. So the name of the group is Vintage Star Wars Action Figures. Vintage Star Wars Action Figures. Okay, nice and simple. Does what it says so, on the tin. We like that. So that, that group's at 18,500 members now. So we're about 1,500 away from... But it's, like, it's like all things. It's like groups, you know, you, you say you've got eight and a half thousand members about eighteen thousand of those are inactive you know it's just, <laughs> just the churn factor for facebook just the way things are so yeah no i'm familiar with it <laughs> <laughs> try not to sound too bitter when i say that as well <laughs> so yeah so when people are oh i've got this many members it's, it's how many active members you've got and i yeah, think I, i've probably got less than a lot of the other groups now because well, i think it's one of those things where there's a lot of groups where there's a lot of active admins and they're always pushing stuff and kind of going, right, let's, let's involve all of our readership. Whereas yeah. mine is, mine has always been very hands off. So, I, you know, I, there's very little I do on it. People want to advertise. It was, it was kind of like um, a gateway for people to kind of move on to better things. So when initially when I set it up, all these people joined and I said, right, well, if you want to learn about Star Wars, you want to go to all these different forums. And there was a, Certain group of people came up and said, we don't want to do that. We want to do things on Facebook. So I just went, well, that's fine. We do it all here then. So, you know, and that, that, that was the kind of start of the, the, the mass move of um, stuff from forums to Facebook, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So have you any other bits and pieces like Twitter or uh, any other kind? Or is that the, the uh, way yeah, you spend no, the... Those, those, those are my kind of two, two big things on the web, I would say. Great. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time today, Jason, again. And uh, obviously, we will put the um, groups and the websites in the show notes so people can find them there. Uh, and thank, Yeah, thank you again. Well, we, we warned you. Um, <laughs> there is a man who knows his stuff. Right, guys? Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, we're thank very grateful to um, to Jason for taking time out of his no doubt busy schedule to talk to us about his collection, and we look forward to at some point in the not too distant future having him on again. Um, so, as is cut, you know, we we wouldn't be the toy box without talking a bit about our recent accumulations. So, who wants to kick us off? Uh, I'm I'm happy to go for a go change. For it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I finally got my Greedo. Yes. Oh, yes. And and my story behind my Greedo is that, um, I, if you recall, I told you I'd sent a, a snaggletooth off to somebody. I had a yep. spare snaggletooth, and I'd, I'd sent it off to them. Well, they actually went out to um, Celebration in America. And yes. while they were there, they uh, they knew that I needed a Greedo. They, they listened to the show, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, they found me a Greedo, and I've got a Greedo from uh, the Celebration. Fantastic. So I'm pleased with that. He, yeah. He's a little, he's a little gem. I've got all of the original twelve now, which I'm pleased about. Mm. Um, that's just that's nice, isn't it? It's just it just goes to show, boys and girls, what happens when you're nice to each other. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 gave Mark, I gave Mark a load at the um, identity up in up in London, so I'm hoping he's going to give me something yeah, amazing in return. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. You, I'm sure you'll. I'm sure you'll get something back in return. Uh, Mark to, is to be fair, generous, man. I. I got my Matt Keegan picture and I couldn't be happy with that. I mean, oh, that, yeah, I got, I got one of those too. I'm well made up. With yeah, that. They, they're pretty amazing. I'm very pleased with that. And yeah. the other things I've got have pretty much been um, Lego Buildables. That's cool. Um, I'm, I've got a slight addiction to the Lego <laughs> Buildables. Yeah. Have you seen and the uh, Biker Scout on the speeder bike? No. No, Which one I is don't. It? Oh, that's beautiful. It's, I think it's about fifty pound, but it's it's absolutely brilliant. Oh, no. Yeah, I was so tempted to buy that. <laughs> I, well, I, I managed to get um, 
I don't, you know, the the, the actually the figure that that yeah, I don't know if you've seen Freddie building them. Yeah, I managed to get him. It, it, we filmed him building Bane's Melbourne the other week. Nice. Uh, and we got Chirrut in work, and Chirrut's a favourite from Rogue One. So I managed Good to choice. get Chirrut, and um, I managed to get him for like um, nine ninety nine from Argos. Nice. And really cheap. And then we were at Sainsbury's the other day, looking around because they hadn't. They were, uh, well, for the election, the school was shut, so I hadn't for the day. We just thought we'd go out and about for the day. We went to have a look at the toys. Mm-hmm. And um, first, the first one we saw was Finn. We found a Finn um, Lego buildable, and he was nine ninety nine. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. We'll get that. So we yeah. picked Finn up, and as we walked to the main aisle, we saw the big Darth Vader one they do, Ooh. but that was reduced to fourteen pound or something. Uh, everywhere I've seen it, it's been wow. twenty five. So Finn had to go back, I'm afraid. We couldn't afford both. Ah, so, shame. So, so Darth is going to be the next one he builds because uh, he's saving Chirrut and Wade till last because that's his favourite. But we, And then we've looked at some of the other ones. I mean, it, it's going to be a bit of an addiction that I've got going on there because Freddie loves to build them and I like to just have them stood in front of their book. Nice. For some reason. So, but that's, yeah, that, that's, that's nice, that's isn't what, it? That means the, the fates have aligned, as it were. You know, he likes building them. You like putting them there in built there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a win-win. So they they all, all then go and live in the uh, man cave or one of the man caves. But yeah. <laughs> one day, son, all this will be yours. But we're <laughs> over my get out of that's my right. cold dead hands. <laughs> Literally, I've told him this. Yeah, no, that's I've, fair. I've, I've managed. I've managed to get a few things off of him. You know, recently as well. Yeah. I'd say to him, these would look nice. Do you think some Jedi mind tricks? He's only young. Yeah, yeah, these are not in my collection, wouldn't they? Or well, our yeah. collection, I don't tell him. Oh, oh. Like, oh yeah, that would be good. Yeah. So He's a smart kid, of... Freddy. So I met him. Yeah, a... You have indeed, yeah. 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 He, 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 he loved, he really loved that day going up there to, to see the identities. He was, oh, bless uh, he, he was saying, oh, it's great to meet all the other guides and yeah. really kind of trying to, he really, really being part of it. And I, I think, you know, with, kids who are into Star Wars to, to the degree that he would be and you know mm-hmm. I, I imagine that because he said to me I don't understand why people watch football he said it's, it's okay. people kicking a ball around why, why they not Star Wars yeah. so I think when he's that much into it I think it's good to him to see the adults not just me being his dad because you know yeah. I, I can't put a foot wrong I'm his dad but he, he can see that there are loads of people who are into the collecting and into the Star Wars and they share that kind of passion and it's, uh, so for him it's okay to collect Star Wars things be they vintage or modern you know mm-hmm. cool yeah no that's, I, I think that's fair enough you know um, it was, you know obviously I don't want to put words in his mouth and presume that he's saying that uh, the best thing about it was me and me I'm going to assume that but I don't <laughs> oh, want to course. overtly say that no of course uh, it, it was very impressive how tall you were <laughs> oh well I get that a lot <laughs> You well, see, he's used to me being his dad, and I'm sizable myself. So yeah, yeah, someone yeah. taller than me, you know, he's it, it's, it's, imp- it's, it's amazing, impressive. Yeah. It's noticeable. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's impressive with that. Yeah, no, that's good. It, it was nice meeting him. You know, it was a a very nice time. Well, hopefully, it will come to any of the meetups that we do. I still think we should do Skellig Michael one year. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, we're talking about possibly going up to Echo Live, right? In yeah, October. Yeah, my auto room's yeah. booked. Yeah. So Jeremy, are you up oh, for you up oh, for a trip? Yeah, like I'm this? definitely up for that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet. So oh, we'll do yeah, we'll do a, we'll figure it out between trip. us. Yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out between us. I can always book stuff up and you know we can square the cash up later. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm not doing it right now, I just mean generally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, not right this second. Yeah. Um and obviously I'll get a separate rooms because I don't want to presume <laughs> anything on your on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Mark how about you any new acquisitions um, I finally got my 40th anniversary out of Rito excellent Mark series um, I'm still looking for the R5 day 4 but uh, they are supposed to be coming out later on in the year over here oh are they, are they not available in the UK yet then? no it's uh, a Target exclusive I believe yeah yeah I don't think I'm going to collect a full lot but uh I just I just love the Auto Dito. I didn't I didn't get the on, on the original Black Series line. 
So yeah. um, I've got a few of the original Black Series, but I thought I've got to get that one. Um, mm. Took me about a month. I ordered it on Amazon. It took about a month to get here. Okay. I hope you used the Talk Star Wars link. I did. I did, yeah. <laughs> All my uh, Amazon purchases there. Um, I also got Prune Face, which I needed for my loaf run. Nice. Yep. I got that for Father's Day, which I know is next week, but I got it from the dog. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, that is Good very... Good Yeah. Nice. So any other bits and pieces, or is that the main stuff? Um, I was in Scarborough this past week. I uh, went to a few different uh, toy shops, and okay. I found a white-haired Jeremy Corbett. No, sorry, Ben Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> so that was... Uh, which is a yeah. variant... Of the yeah the grey haired one yeah I got it for five pound uh, nice so yeah that was there just isn't any, anything like that around here is there Rob not really mate no I mean we're talking um, sci fi by the sea is kind of the closest we've got a couple of weeks isn't it yeah yeah um, but funnily enough actually I'm about to uh, when when we get to my purchase purchases I've got uh, a little bit to drop on you Jeremy oh yeah Uber. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll not get separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I went today um, at the time of recording to a place in uh, Sittingbourne. Um, the Leisure Centre in Sittingbourne had a, a wargaming show. Oh. So what they also had was a bring and buy sale as well. All right. And within that, they had some. They did have some Star Wars figures. I I have to preface this by saying that I didn't buy any Star Wars figures from this because they were all loose and they were mostly it seemed modern rather than uh vintage so, so i didn't, didn't you know, yeah i didn't I, di- I would have liked to but uh yeah that didn't happen but uh, what i did buy um which is a little bit more collectible than most is um a pop vinyl of ben kenobi which is a smuggler's bounty exclusive oh yeah so i'll send you in fact i'll pop a picture in the show notes because i've got i've got a picture um i just need to get hold of it so while i'm doing that i'll describe the uh thing so basically the, the Smuggler's Bounty one, there's an Obi-Wan Kenobi, which is a hooded a hooded Obi-Wan, which is just a sort of standard pop. What there also is, is, um, like I say, in the Smuggler's Bounty, I forget which one it was, it's uh, Ben Kenobi with his blue lightsaber. Mm. So it's like, a, you know, he sort of goes hood back. It's a bit like the sort of the Rebels look, rather than the, the rather than the hooded one with the lightsaber from A New Hope. There you go. I've just popped a picture of it in the show chat. Um, so the reason I, I wouldn't normally go for pops, uh, a thing like that, but um, nice. yeah, it was fourteen pounds, oh, yeah. which I thought, considering that most of the other ones were sort of ten or eleven, I thought for a little extra that seemed like a quite a good, quite a good purchase. And uh, actually, fr- um, friend of the show and uh, TSW VIP Joe Crouch brackets he ain't no slouch he's no slouch yeah um he <laughs> picked one up a couple of weeks ago and ever since he did i've been sort of looking at it with a little bit of envy going <laughs> yeah, you know what <laughs> when i if i ever see one of those at an affordable price i'm most i'm most definitely going to get myself one so uh i did and i'm very pleased with it <laughs> it's uh, a pretty thing yeah so i touched on it in the in the chat with um jason but i'm actually gonna i, I make a point of opening these things because they're not to me, there's a little bit of a false economy in collectible items nowadays because stuff is made in such volume yeah. that it's not going to be collectible unless some of them are physically destroyed. And I don't mean in terms of like some weird, you know, authoritarian fun burning. I just mean <laughs> people, <laughs> people, um, you know, but you know, breaking them or they get that. Da- I mean, especially with bobbleheads because the bobbleheads are. You know they're they're probably quite easy to break. In fact, I know this because one of the ones on our shelf is broken. Um, <laughs> oh. Although weirdly enough, when I replaced it, it was for my other half, and she um she went oh excellent and put it next to the broken one. I was like well, that was designed to take its place. So and now we have two. Nice. It was, uh, in, for those wondering, it was Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. But it, the little dancing, it was the bobblehead was yeah the bobblehead was sort of thematic because it was the dancing in the little plant pot from the end of the film. Uh, yeah it's rather adorable as they all are really i did have one of those yeah funnily enough um 
I was there with a few friends, including um, one of my friends had their baby daughter with them, who's sort of a few months old. Very cute kids. And she kept sort of reaching out for the Ben Kenobi. I was like, oh, she's, <laughs> she's caught on well. She's not only up for, uh, you know, collectibles. She likes Star Wars. She likes Ben Kenobi. What more can you ask for? Well, hopefully she'll enjoy a movie one of these days about Ben Kenobi. I think, yeah, maybe, you know. Um, I think she's already been, ex- well, I say exposed. I think she's already been introduced quite possibly to um, to Star Wars generally. Mm. Mark, what are your views on, on opening the Funko? Um, opening them is okay because you can put them back, back in the box. Mm. You can, this is true. It's not and like actually, it's not like a carded figure where you, once you open it, it's open. You can actually true. put it back in the box. Yeah. So it's not that bad. But no. I wouldn't. I the ones I have, the, the special edition ones. Yeah. I've got them in protection, protective cases. Oh, and other ones, yeah, the sort of uh, the sort of thick plastic yeah. cases that they go in the boxes go inside to yeah. keep them. Yeah. I mean, this box is already a touch scuffed, but I'm not gonna, you know. I'm not a big haggler when it comes to that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Although, funnily enough, I've got, a friend, I've got a friend who's like that. He's. I, we went to. So I've talked before about how um, Forbidden Planet is near my work yeah. in um, in London. So I go in there quite frequently, and occasionally I've been known in the past to pick up a few pop vinyls. Nowadays, it's more Hero Clicks, but pop vinyls were most definitely part of the purchasing equation at one point. Um, pretty much until I got the ones I wanted, really. And. I was looking at the reduced aisle because there's a little selection of stuff yeah. that's been, you know, casing damaged or, you know, they do some of these sort of um, these collectible statues, the really, you know, the really nice ones. Yeah. The really nice ones. Yeah. Um, some of those can go reduced if like, you know, if something needs gluing back on, it's just dropped off or something's been snapped or something. They'll they'll oh. sort of quite heavily discount it because obviously it's not pristine anymore, yeah. but it might it might be of interest to somebody who can repair it. You know, so we're browsing this aisle and we see, I think it was Deadpool. It was a pop vinyl of something. I'm pretty sure it was Deadpool. Yeah. And it was reduced from, I think, 11 pounds down to five or six because the box was damaged. Yeah. So for me, that's, you yeah, know, that's, that's a win-win. win-win. Yeah. Um, because I've got, you know, I get a discounted version of something I'd bought. I'd have happily bought anyway, given the having the cash in my wallet. And um, it's not going to make any difference to me because it's coming out of the box. And he turns around and says, oh, for me to buy it, they'd have to reduce it down to about a pound. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's unbelievable. Like, my friend is weird. He's weird. He's tight in some realms and then stupidly free, you know, frivolous in others. So he's very odd. He's a, a, a walking enigma, that dude. But uh, <laughs> he's an enjoyable company, certainly for a trip to Forbidden Planet because he's Captain Enabler. So, no, you, you should definitely buy it. Um, most common number of hero clicks purchases have been made with him in my group. <laughs> yeah. In fact, some of those have been uh, purchased recently as well. I know it's not, not star Wars, but I may, you know, the, ta- the tangential tenuous link is I may one day convert them into star Wars pieces. There you go. <laughs> Using uh, small miniatures, but yeah, I've been uh, a little bit, I've been curating a few collectibles. So looking for stuff that specifically catches my fancy rather than going for the blind stuff. Yeah, I still do that, but not as much as uh, not as much recently as usual. Recently, I've been a bit more choosy in specific characters and specific things. It's worked out quite well, I think. Yeah. So, what's the big news in in the Star Wars collectible world? Um, this is the story about the uh, Rancho Obi one that Jason mentioned. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so sad. So for those who aren't familiar, Mark, do you want to give us a sort of rundown? Um, I'm not really up on up on top of this at, at the moment. I'm going to uh, do okay. a tie run tomorrow about it. Oh, cool. But, okay. uh, I did I did a uh, article on Talk Star Wars, Talk Order yeah. UK, but mm-hmm. um, the gist of it is the guy that's worked for it uh, and was a friend of uh, Steve Sansway at uh, uh, Rancho Obi Wan. Yeah. Um, has been taking things from Rancho Obi Wan. Yes, yeah, so he's been half inching stuff. Rare, rare items. Yeah. He's even been to, to uh, Steve Sansweet's house <sighs> and still stolen things from there. It only came to light when um, a rare Boba Fett 
was being sold. I think it was on eBay. Um, mm-hmm. Steve Swansweet must have noticed it and thought, oh, I used to have one of those. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, some of the things he's stolen is, is like um, the Lego, you know, the, the Super Star Destroyer. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Crikey. I mean, that's massive. How how do you get yeah? How do you get that out except in pieces? <laughs> Unless you take a piece of it. Yeah. But even then, surely you walk past and you go, hang on yeah. a minute. I could have sworn that was longer. I just... I don't understand. <laughs> Unless it was taking yeah. pieces to an exhibition somewhere or uh, Maybe. Just yeah. diverting it to his house or something. I didn't. Yeah, it didn't all find its way back after, a, after an yeah, exhibition or something. Yeah, that's all, that's all I can think of if, how he did it. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. Especially as, like, you know, it's a friend as well. It's yeah, not just... But- you know, obviously we, we're not going to sort of name names and stuff because it's all accusation and yeah, it's all yeah. hearsay. Well, to a point, it's all hearsay. He has it? been but, charged. I, th- I do believe oh, he has been charged. Yeah. 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 So, um, but yeah, obviously we 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 do not condone that sort of thing. No, it's, no. You know, it's horrendous that uh, you're in that position. Yeah, exactly. It's a privilege. Absolutely. Yeah, I think most people most people would agree this that sort of thing should be treated with more reverence. Yeah. It's a general rule, so you know, it's uh Poor form, oh, anonymous yeah. man who I won't name specifically, <laughs> but <laughs> just in case, you never know. Um, I, I couldn't imagine doing that if you in a position of draft like that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Just, it, it's not something that. Blimey! What you, for those who are listening? That, that I didn't. Nobody cursed. <laughs> that was just a, that was a phone <laughs> alert. That, that was a text page. message from my brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can only apologise for RT That's all right. Chipping in there. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine. I mean, I know someone put on the VIP page the other day saying that you know you, you think that most people would, you know, consider it. But I, I just, if you're not that way wired, it's just a really disrespectful, strange thing to do, and I think it's very sad. Yeah, agreed. That people want to do that. So there. Yes, that's uh, really, really, really bad. <laughs> I can't think of any superlatives. It's just. No. No, it's terrible. None that none that can't be beeped out. Well, exactly. Yeah, obviously that get, puts more work for me in the edit. So yeah, I've already got my work cut out for me because I haven't been organised enough to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> and you I'm, might have I'm, a couple of beats to get out there as well. No, this is it. I'm sh- I should be okay. I think. I think the worst we've said is uh, disrespectful, which is fine. <laughs> and to be fair, we're right. It is. It so, is. You know, yeah. It's, uh, no, it's just. It's just. It, I, you just find yourself. In in kind of in the worst kind of awe in a bad way, you know I don't know what the equivalent. You just find yourself in disbelief that somebody would sort of do that to a mate. Yeah. yeah. But I suppose that in a way that's kind of, it's kind of nice that we think that way because if we didn't think that way, then that would say more about us in general. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We're not saying again. Yeah, good on him. We all have a bit of that yeah. down the market. We. Yeah. Who hasn't thought about ripping one of their mates off? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting to hear Jason talk about um, Snoopers Paradise in Brighton because I used to live when I lived in Brighton. I used to live right around the corner from it, so it's weird really? to think that at some point I may have passed Tony, you know, Tony, and uh, I may have had a, probably had a look through and gone, "I haven't got any money. What am I doing?" and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I can joke about it now, but <laughs> it's, at the time it was quite tough. I have sold a Toy Tony. You've sold two Toy Tony. No, a a Toy Tony. I um oh. I got um, a few figures to sell on from a uh, collector. Oh, okay. And it t- it did it, it didn't tell me it was a toy Tony. It was a hand sell, oh. I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, so when you say a toy Tony, you mean one that's been kind of through that process? Yeah. Right. I don't want to say tainted because, I mean, ultimately, I suppose, especially listening to Jason talk about it, it seems to me like the problem is more transparency and honesty. Yeah, in that, yeah. that he was sort of you know misrepresenting stuff. Actually, like Jeremy said, you know that some of that stuff has value, still has value to people. People will still there buy are people that, stuff. that actually actively seek out these tight Yeah, but it's the fact that he was so kind of shady about yeah. it all that that sort of rankles people. I think if he'd just been honest and just said, you know, look at these, these are these are hilarious. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think people would have been a lot more forgiving. But you know, obviously. That's not the most lucrative way of doing it, but certainly the most long-term sustainable. <laughs> so yeah, what else is uh, what's the other big news in sort of toys and stuff? I mean, you've been Mark. I've been noticing you kind of venting in the in the Facebook group 
which you can find on Facebook by searching TSW Toy Box, by the way. Yeah. Um, oh, I do this for a living, mate. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> you've been venting about some of the sort of the Hasbro woes. Oh. What's, Don't get me started about who, Hasbro. For those who aren't in the group, what kind of what's going what's going on there? Uh, distribution, basically. Um, for the 40th anniversary figures, mm-hmm. the distribution. The, what they do is they have uh, cases. Uh, they have two of each figure, mm-hmm. which is uh, Luke and Kenobi, uh, Princess Leia. But yep. they have one Han Solo and one Arto Dito. Right. So obviously, Han Solo, Arto Dito, you, you can't get hold of them. You I have not actually seen any in, in the shops yet. No, I've, I've, don't think I've seen. I might have seen the ones, the first ones, the Luke and Leia that you mentioned. Maybe briefly in Forbidden Planet, but I don't think I've seen them again since. Yeah, I've I've uh, seen the Darth Vader in the uh, early bird pack. Yeah, that's about it. I've seen the early bird pack. Yeah, yeah, um, which is a bit rich, really, considering that you don't have stock of the rest. But <laughs> I'm not really sure how those things work. So I suppose I'm the worst person to qual- least qualified to speak on them. <laughs> so I have no idea what they are what they're about. So um, I, I, it's mainly in America. Mm-hmm. They have like. Pegs and pegs of Princess Leia's loads yeah. and Kenobi's. But then Hasbro decided mm. to ship full packs, full cases of Princess mm. Leia's. To stores? Yeah. Even though they've already got pegs and pegs and pegs of them? Yeah. Right, okay. Well, didn't you think it would be better to send cases of Han Solo? Or R2-D2 or even Luke? <laughs> so... To start, <laughs> don't seem to know what they're doing. To be honest with you, yeah. Uh, Wave Two's coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing the same. Yeah, I believe it's the Stormtrooper and his Sand People. They're okay. short packed. Yeah. So they will be, you will be able to find those. Hmm. Yeah, that's on the unfortunate state of affairs. I mean, what's the solution? Do you think is it just distribu- rethinking the distribution? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why they do it. It's all it's, it's all the same with toy firms. Why short pack yeah. items that you know that you're going to sell? Mm. It's like the Darth Revan figure, the Black Series figure. Yeah. They've, they've yeah. even taken it off the website. Oh, that Revan? Yeah. It's gone It's gone completely. They could sell thousands and thousands of them. Yeah. It can, it's licensed to print money. but uh, Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking at it now, and I mean, it's licensed to print money for certain eBayers, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not so much, not as much as the uh, the one with the coin. That's even more ridiculous. But you've got certain people on eBay. who have got six of them. Yeah, of course, because they were, you know, they were lucky enough to get six of them, and then now they're like gold dust. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, there's two lightsabers. That's pretty cool. Sorry, I've got a bit sidetracked looking at the Darth Revan. To be honest, <laughs> it is pretty cool. It is rather good, isn't it? I did, um, I did get a case from America when I when I was in running the shop. Um, had the Ahsoka, the Kanan, yep, Luke, but um, I've not seen another Ahsoka since. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I can't recall seeing anything like that. No. No. You know, so you just don't see them in the shops. Yeah, there's bits and pieces like the Black Series stuff. They have Forbidden Planet in London have um have Black Series stuff, but it's all kind of tucked away at the back of the shop in the sort of in the back corner, and you don't want to. You know, you don't want to just walk around, help yourself, and just have a look. But you also don't want to, you know, I don't particularly want to talk to them. Um, that's not that's made that sound horrible. Um, <laughs> it's I just, you know, I don't want to bother them. Let's go with that. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. I I forgot. I did. You mentioned the soaker. I did remember that. Um, I've, I've got a brother who frequents second-hand shops all the time. He loves them. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got me a couple of those. I don't know if you saw the picture of the hardback books. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's Ahsoka and... Um, oh, I can't remember what the other one was now. But, yeah, he, he just turned up every now and again and said, oh, I saw these books in second-hand in the charity shop. You can have them. <laughs> I just t- tend to get random books off him, which I'm always pleased about. Nice. I, I, I like oh, yeah, collect- I did see that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like collecting them, but... I, I find some of the books dull, if I'm honest. Yeah, okay. Some of them are a bit hard to read. Um, yeah. I haven't tried either of those two yet, but I know Mark doesn't like the Chuck Wendy one either, does he? Mm. Um, yeah, He's, I mean, I'm I'm kind of 
I, I like the stories he tells, but I'm not particularly. He writes in present tense, which I find weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of that style. I am actually so reading Thrawn at the moment. Oh, the uh, the Zahn, the, the new Zahn. Oh, that, is, that is amazing. Is it good? Yeah. I've heard mixed things. I have to get it. Yeah, to, to check, check it out. out. Yeah. Nice. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. I'm gonna turn into TSW toy box and book box. <laughs> book, <laughs> yeah. The TSW bookshelf as well. <laughs> I'll start, just I'll start talking about comics, but I better not do. Oh no! We, I think we get sued then, don't we? Even yeah, though, probably. <laughs> even though it's part, you no know, rule part of the same family. We'll be getting like, letter still, from Disney. There's still a bit of a banter rivalry, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, what? So, is there anything you guys are looking forward to, sort of coming out, or that you that you've got your eye on the next thing? So it feels like we're kind of, you know, we've got a good good amount of stuff we've picked up. So, is there anything on the horizon for you guys that you got in, in mind for next? Um, I still, I'm still after me Admiral Ackbar loves figure. Okay. That'll uh, complete me 79, first 79. Oh wow, okay. Still need. I'll do the. I still need 10 for the last 17, though. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're still working on They're going to cost me. Yeah. But I'll be glad to get that Admiral Akbar. Yeah. Jeremy, what about you, mate? We lost Jeremy. Jeremy? Jeremy. <laughs> I'm just going to keep yelling his name until he comes back. Jeremy! <laughs> so, I'll tell you what, while he's, while he's finding his way back, we'll um, let's talk a bit more about this Admiral Akbar. So which set is this from? It's the, the lowest one. Loose, is it the 82? Yeah. Yeah. 82, okay. With, with, you, uh, with the pointy stick. The pointy stick. <laughs> Just got a link for you there. Right. Two, Two hours, hours left. left. With stick. Oh, nice. Yep. There you go. Smile back, I'm back. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, as long as it's not a repro stick. I'll be, yes, I'll be on that. Oh, hang on. So I've got another one here. It looks vaguely different. The uh, the stick. It might just be my eyes playing tricks on me. Do you get much use out of the um, the job lot items and weapons and such? Yeah, yeah. I got a job lot of weapons last week. Yeah. Most of them were repro, mm-hmm. but I don't keep them for uh, just completing sort of. Just, just to, just to make sure I know which what the replay looks like. Yeah. To got some of the capes. I got a Jabba mm-hmm. cape. Hello, and, uh, Hello, Jeremy. So we lost uh, Jeremy. In, we lost Jeremy briefly in the background there. Uh, I, I broke the internet. That's all right, mate. It happens. Happens to the best of us. It happened to me the other day, so that's how I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about um, so Mark's in the market for an Admiral Akbar vintage figure. I've just oh, sent him okay. a link. I've just sent him a link to one, um, and I was just. It, I've gone down the rabbit hole now. Um, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, I see loads of job lots of weapons and. You, you mustn't know. step step away from eBay. Yeah, I'm 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 trying my best, but uh, you know it's very alluring. Um, so t- I'll tell you what, Jeremy. What um, what about you? What are you looking? You got anything? You're kind of. Um, you know. Um, Vintage wines, anything that I haven't already got. Um, I also am listening to um, Alatoy talking about the diecast models. I remember having all of the diecast models, mm-hmm. and they they were things of beauty. And I, and when uh, I think it was you and I when I first started collecting a year or so ago, you got me into this. One of the things I'm thinking of was getting you know a little vintage Millennium Falcon and stuff like that. So I'd like to start mm-hmm. getting a few of the little ones. Um, but it, it, sneaking them in past the mission, do you think I'm mad? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Collecting these things. She thinks I'm completely barking mad because I'm a grown up person collecting toys. So there is there's a conflict of interest. Much as I want to go out and spend you know, my money on the vintage things, I, I kind of have to find a way of justifying it. So yeah. I have to have a good day at work and say, oh, I've earned this much money today. Can I have a toy, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what I have to do. Yeah, so that's cool. I mean, that's a good system. Like, when I first did it, um, I had my shop up and running, and, and I was buying buying my vintage stuff as uh, set decoration for the shop. And I managed to get that past the account and say, look, these, these are things I'm putting in the shop, and it's a carpet shop. Obviously, you need Star Wars things there. 
But yeah. uh, so people come in and they engage with me and they talk and say, oh, I had that figure or that craft. And, mm-hmm. and that, that seemed to go all right. But yeah. uh, Claire, Claire's not quite so understanding. So right. um, I, have, I have to be a bit careful. But uh, that and, and the Lego, I mean, luckily I've got Freddy, so I can, the modern stuff, I could just buy that and go, oh, it's for Freddy, it's not for me, it's for Freddy, it's not mine. Yeah. And, and then it just appears in my collection at some point. But if, I mean, vintage ones. Uh, I've got a few craft that I've bought that I, I, I'd like to clean up. I've got an at at that that's complete and that, that looks a bit beaten up. I'd like to give that a bit of a clean up. So maybe mm. I could do another thing about that. But um, you know, we've got to build the Lego things we've got before I can justify getting it. You know, the backlog. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So I've got um, one in particular that I'm kind of eyeing up, which I'm very tempted by. It's the um the six inch. It's not a vintage one, but it's the six inch black series director Kranich. Oh, you would want that though. Oh, of course I would. would. You know, yeah, I don't man, have any. Well, I don't have any black series items, and it feels like um he would be a good kind of you know a fitting start if I ever wanted to start a collection. Do you have uh, like a, a Kranich corner where you've just got all your no, no, Kranich no. things? Huh? <laughs> nothing like nothing so you know nothing so creepy, frankly. Um, <laughs> No, I just you know I'm 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 just a fan. That's all. I just like him. I think he's a really you know a really cool villain. Have you seen the yeah. Disney Star Elite series? Yes. Um. So the the diecast ones or the sort of the doll. The doll one, the deluxe, yeah. deluxe one, fifteen pound. They're really the the prices are really good on them. Yeah. Uh, I did inquire about whether or not because they've got the. So for those who aren't familiar, the Disney Store have a uh, what's called the Elite series, which is either. A sort of 12 inch doll or a six inch die cast figure um and they have this is the annoying thing in the die cast range they have almost everybody from rogue one guess who's missing <laughs> <laughs> and i know this because i asked the bloke he's very helpful he was he, I, he was in uh, westfield stratford so if you're listening managers of westfield stratford <laughs> there's a fellow who works there he's really nice so be nice to him whoever he is um i didn't catch his name unfortunately i feel terrible now um, I could have been the difference between him and a pay rise, couldn't I? Uh, but um, yeah, they do. They don't do the Krennic in the six-inch diecast, but they do have the twelve-inch doll figures. The only thing with that is, I don't really. I mean, I, to be fair, I don't really have the space for the six-inch, so the twelve-inch is even less of a, you know, less of a likely proposition. Sadly, um, six-inch seems to be my limit as far as what I can what I can stretch to. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hoisted by my own patar. Uh, <laughs> We've both been sitting there, I think, waiting for you to say something like that. <laughs> hoisted, by my own my to- you. Hoist, hoisted by my own decay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the main one. I mean, I'm looking at, you know, obviously I'm looking at other collectible stuff outside Star Wars, but that's the main ones in terms of Star Wars stuff. Although I do want some of the, more of the bits from the, from the Imperial Assault game, the uh, the tabletop game. Yeah. Hmm. Plus, they're doing a um a big box expansion for the Star Wars Rebellion board game, which has been sort of uncharacteristically unloved by Fantasy Flight up until now. But now we know why that is. It's because rather than release little expansions like they do for X Wing and Imperial Assault and all that, they're actually releasing a full big box expansion, which is called. I want to say it's the birth like the birth of the rebellion or something like that rebellion expansion it's called rise of the empire there we go wow. so the base game is set in the civil war which is sort of you know new hope to jedi era and then uh rise of the empire is a rogue one centric expansion mm. which does sort of adds characters like the crew of you know the crew of the the rogue one crew director Krennic some different items like um you know some of the sort of nebulon b frigates and tie strikers u-wings stuff like that um and it looks pretty bloody special if i'm honest um i'm not sure what the release date is on that i think it's our third quarter so i guess they're doing financial year in which case it'll probably be october to january somewhere in there maybe that's my christmas list uh sorted <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes otherwise i mean x-wing wise i've got all the ships i want imperial assault wise i'm not even sure what i can get um although i've heard rumblings that the emperor is making his way to imperial assault 
Oh, but then if, I, I would feel like at that point, he, that's kind of the the limit, isn't it? If you beat the if you release the emperor, that's it. Surely you're going to be, you know, at that point you'll release you've released all the characters you're going to think because he's like the top of the empire. So it doesn't get much better than that. I don't really see how where you go from there. Maybe you print a second edition and get money otherwise. There's already rumblings about that because a lot of their so Fantasy Flight, the publisher, a lot of their games are getting reprints with um, app-driven sort of accompaniment. So Mansions of Madness, Descent, all that stuff is being rep- is being reprinted with a heavy emphasis on getting the free companion apps. And the idea is they tell you when to put, you know, when they t- they tell you to put tiles down, they tell you what to put down and where to put it. So you don't have to do the pre the preamble setup at the beginning of the game. So it cuts down the the setup at the beginning and speeds the game right up. Right. so they've they've released a couple of other ones but the the rumbling is that imperial assault was um off the table because well i don't know what the actual reason was but i heard a rumor that it was because ea have the the license for star wars related game content on mobile devices so, so i'm guessing that? that if that's the ca- if that's true and it's now being there's talk of it now being released it may be that they've come to some sort of agreement so who knows otherwise the only other thing i've got my eye on is there's a um a really nice cloud city darth vader statue that um really really beautiful <laughs> and it makes me it's a it's a kota bukia they're called um they're just basically sort of artifact scale figures all right yeah and it's just stunning it's just really Ooh, beautifully, beautifully detailed um, I will send you a link because I think it needs to be seen. Uh, there we go. But that's uh, they run at a sort of 50, 50 or so pounds. So yeah, you know, it's um, it's intriguing. I'll say that. But there's some really nice um, stuff in the realm of statues. Uh, they've got like samurai variants and original Ralph McQuarrie. So they make things based on their Ralph McQuarrie concept designs, that sort of thing. There's some really nice stuff. I have to take some pictures sometime next time I'm passing uh, Forbidden Planet. Get some shots. I've never been to the Facebook Planet. Group. Oh, Jeremy, we need to fix this, mate. Oh, you would wow. love it. You would love every second of it. I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> I'll be, I can protect you. <laughs> I'm not, know, I'm, I'm, I'm not as bad of an enabler as I'm as I'm made to made to sound by some. I'd love to. I really, I'd love to go. I really would. I think there's one at Blue Water now, and there some some or that way. I think. I don't know. There's some. I know. I, when I was passing through, so when we went to our identities meet up, we did. Um, yeah. Me and Joe Crouch. He again still is no slouch. We went back through Westfields on the way back to the train. And yeah. we, you know, we had, a, we were able to sort of look in the window of a few places, and there's this brand new geek shop in Ooh. Westfields. Um, it looked pretty expensive from what I could see, so that's a shame. Well, uh, that, then. But on the other hand, it's quite nice because it's quite expensive, so it puts me off buying stuff, which is, you know, yeah. Yeah, an unexpected side effect, which they probably didn't plan for, but I'll quite happily take. Yeah, but, I, I find I have a problem if I go and like Smiths or whatever, and they reduce. Their um, Funko, so I'm gonna they reduce Funko to a fiver. Yeah, and I think yeah, if they're only fiver. I better buy all of the ones I want now. <laughs> I better buy and all of them. Spending, yeah, uh, so I never spend a lot more money than if I've gone in there a tenner and I go, you know what, I like that look, I buy that look for a tenner and then, then I'm done. But yeah. now I see like four for a fiver, I better get them all because <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> nah, I'm right there with you, mate. I do the same whenever there's a that's how that's why they do it, isn't it? You know, whenever yeah. there's a sale on, that's what you do. You uh you buy it up and that's the idea. That's why they reduce it. Needs All right. Four, right, then. right. Yep. Cool. All right. So I think that's uh that's us wrapped up for this edition of the TSW Toy Box. So uh, guys, this is your opportunity to plug your various social media outlets. The floor is yours. Whoever wants it first <laughs> should have thought that through. <laughs> I'll I'll go first. I let my right, yeah. Uh, TSW Toy Box on Facebook. Yep. That's our group. Posting uh, every day. Almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and Blue Harvest UK on Twitter 
Who Harvest UK on Twitter. Nice. And obviously you've got the the TSW Toy Run audio podcasts on TalkStarWars.co.uk, which are jolly fun. Yes. Um, and you've you've also done a solo toy box in the absence of uh, did, yes. the rest of us. <laughs> but you did you handled it very well. I was very you know I I think you did an excellent job. Oh thank you. <laughs> it's nice to know it. It's nice to know in a pinch that that can be done. I wouldn't have been able to do it, mate. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I really wish the guys yeah, were here for it. Yeah, I mean, me just for 20 minutes going, I really wish the guys were here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I also want to also want to give away the um, Darth Vader, the vintage Darth, Darth Vader. Vader. Vintage Darth Vader, okay, great stuff. So did you want to do it on the show or did you want to do it in the group? I'll do it on the show. Yeah, all right. And get people really? to listen. Yeah. Uh, the cool. question, question for the vintage Darth Vader is, okay. what was Dave Prowser's, or Darth Vader's, stunt double? What was his name? Okay. All right. So what was Dave Prowse or who played the role of, there you go, who filled the role of Dave Prowse's stunt double? Because um, this is, is this for the same person for all three films? Yeah. Yes, yeah, it is. Okay. Um, the, what, what happened was um, Dave Prowse, when he was auditioned, he said he could fence. Yes. And he couldn't. <laughs> yeah. So this guy had to, uh, had to do the lightsaber yeah. fight yeah. for him. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, the, so to win a vintage Darth Vader, who filled the role of Day Prize's stunt double during the original Star Wars trilogy? Excellent. Okay. So we will, we need to set a, probably set a closing date on that, right? What do you want to do, do that for? But the 1st of July? 1st of July. Okay, that's no problem. We can get the uh, get the word out by then. Andy Smith won the... Uh, do it on social media as well, obviously. Jedi Luke. Jedi Luke. Yes, you gave away Jedi Luke. That went to a loving home. It certainly did. Yeah. So, um, so if you want to become part of the TSW Toy Box competition, then you can email us at uh, talkstarwarsinfo at gmail.com with the subject line toy box or TSW toy box. Both will find its way to us. Uh, and if you want to win a vintage Darth Vader, answer the question of who filled the role of Dave Prowse's stunt double during the original Star Wars trilogy. Cool. So, um, Jeremy, how about you, mate? Social media, how about it? Uh, social media, you would normally find me insulting things and people on the Talk Star Wars VIP page. I'm okay. A lot. Uh, yep. But so also, ha- I'm Jeremy at Talk Star Wars. Uh, on Twitter, your Rowling is it Rowling Jeremy on Twitter? Your actual yeah. at name where people can find. Oh, I, I mean, you can, you, can ser- it, you can search Talk Star Wars on Twitter and you'll find I'm Jeremy. You find yeah. Jeremy. Um, you can find others as well, but you know, Jeremy, Jeremy first. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's you guys. So you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rob Boyd Vision, um, and obviously find everything we all do toy related in the tsw toy box facebook group which you can join by finding it on facebook and just sending us a message and we'll gladly add you into our burgeoning community which seems to be getting larger every week so it is yep um and as i say you can email any uh competition entries or if you just have questions for the show want to know more about uh, your esteemed collectors then you can email us at talkstarwarsinfo at gmail.com with the subject line t- either toy box or tsw toy box and like I say, both will find their way our way. Am I missing anything? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh well, I me mean, obviously you can you can uh, go to talkstarwars.co.uk. You can go to Talk Star Wars Facebook page. You can find out, as Jeremy mentioned, about becoming a TSW VIP at talkstarwars.co.uk/support, where you can get episodes like this first. So they'll get it shortly before your good selves. If you're not a VIP, if you're a VIP, you've already got it. So you know. Everybody's happy. Um, so if you want to become a TSW VIP, support our network and incre- you know give us more opportunity to expand our programming, talkstarwars.co.uk slash support is where you can do that. And as I say, the main thing that obviously is best about it is us, the TSW Toy Box. Um, there's no rivalry. I just like saying it. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks for your time today, guys. Lovely. And, uh, Thank you. Let's talk about Loot Crate. Are you on a quest for epic gear, housewares and collectibles? 
Loot Crate offers an epic range of pop culture items for less than $20 per month. Whether you're shopping for the geek in your life or you are that geek, Loot Crate is the best surprise you know is coming. Every month there's a different theme and new and exclusive items that you can only get with Loot Crate. Treat yourself every month or give the gift of geeking out to a friend or a loved one. You have until the 19th at 9pm Pacific to subscribe and receive that month's crate and when the cutoff happens, that's it, it's over. Make sure to head to lootcrate.com forward slash talkstarwars and enter the code talkstarwars and save $3 off your new subscription today.